I'm about to recommend a game a lot of you are not even going to like. It's a fantastic game, no doubt, but I just can't imagine how I could sell you on slow, sturdy, bullet by bullet reloading combat with absolute tilt potential if there's games like Titanfall 2 available right now. But I'll try anyway, because somehow this game managed to break the 250 hour playtime barrier. A game whose hardcore nature I shouldn't have enjoyed as much as I did. A game that sends worrying amounts of adrenaline regularly from my veins. A game which sent me back for my sweetest multiplayer experiences of the last decade. A game called Hunt Showdown, one that brought back a lot of memories, but also created a wild mix of new ones. I don't think there's a game like Hunt, yet it reminds me of a lot of other ones at the same time. As part of a lone group of hunters, you prepare your equipment to venture into the fantasy horror setting of the American Louisianan Bayou, searching for clues to the whereabouts of a hideous monster hiding somewhere amidst the abandoned shacks and farms. You're lost somewhere within a swamp overrun by infected grunts, mutated dogs and other horrors. As are other hunters. Hunt creates this really creative PvPvE mix, where both the overworld as well as other players are out there for you, and where you can lose your progress at any time. Yet, for being so hardcore, the game puts a lot of control into your hands. You can always choose your battles and the equipment you want to fight them with. You're not forced to do anything really, except to survive. And only in the rarest of occasions did any of my friends lose their hunters for something that didn't make sense afterwards. It's always quite the contrary. Every last match ends with a never-ending list of things each one could have done better. Be it positioning, callouts, or sometimes just pure skill. Just recently I've seen this mind map on Reddit with all the possible scenarios that might have gotten you killed. That's the kind of thoughts that Hunt's death scream spawns within you. And yet again, there is loss. If you die with one of your teammates alive, there's room for salvation. But if you're the last man standing... There's nothing. The hunter you've used for the past two to three hours, all of their expensive equipment, the personalized traits, their stories, lost. All that's left are questions. Why did this happen? What did I do wrong? Comfy by you. Hunt plays a never ending game with you, one of overcoming obstacles and encountering new ones all the time. Hunt is the kind of game that redirects every single loss right back at you. A game where you learn all the time. What Hunt does really well is making you feel like a monster hunter. <clears throat> There's something like a preparation phase which plays a really big part in that. It starts way before venturing into the bayou itself by making you ask a lot of questions. Can we synergize our builds within a group somehow? Do we equip ourselves to rush in with guns and bolts blazing? Or do we play it cool from a comfortable long range distance? And even once you arrive in the bayou, a big part of your gameplay is investigation. Your matches start as blank slates. All you know is how many bounties there are, which general areas they reside in, and the maximum amount of players being 12. From there, you need to find clues. Clues to specify where the correct hideout is, sure, but also how many people are left, where they are, and how they are. Hunters always leave traces. Not literal steps in the mud, but a plethora of subtle ones. Open doors, burned stables, hidden traps, empty crates. Hunt's design has a lot of consistencies. Meaning you can get used to things and notice when something feels off, which will help you to get a feeling of the match and its course of action. It's small things like crates visibly being either full, used or empty. Or the look of hints changing whether they've been interacted with before or not. The bounty map also updates the same way for every player, no matter which hints they have taken or their respective order. The sound design also plays a big role in this. Every single thing in Hunt makes some sort of very specific sound, and I mean everything. Walking, running, crouching, exhaustion, changing weapons, equipping, or readying every single weapon. Grass, wood, water, mud, monsters, horses, crows, ducks, grunts, attacks, misses, hits, charges, scopes, reloading triggers. And all of these sounds are traces. And these traces change their texture based on how much stuff and space is between you and the source. And as subtle as they may be, 
they are important clues you need to collect and evaluate. You're always trying to keep track of the state of the game that you're in. Imagine the scenario. You start at Stillwater and get a hint. Alice gets grayed out, as well as Stillwater. Do we immediately move towards Chapel? There's a good chance that somebody from Scupper or Port might move down. Anyway, you start running, but... Then there's suddenly Krause in the north. <sighs> Ooh, shots too. So there's definitely someone in Alice or Port Reeker. Were these shots accidental? Are there two teams fighting, or is the team rushing the bounty in port? Do we join in as a third party, or do we get a quick hint at Chapel to get more info? And the best part? There is no absolutely right answer in any of this. It's all up to your interpretation of the current situation, grounded by the number of clues you've gathered this match, as well as your current knowledge of the game, to make a decision. The more I play Hunt, the more I feel like the classic literary hunter. The one reading tracks in a muddy road, strategizing on the fly and becoming one with their surroundings. The one who knows more about the prey than it does itself. Monster Hunter is a game where you explore a wild fantasy world to discover foreign monsters, and Hunt reminds me a lot of it. Choosing which weapons and equipment you take for your hunt, the amount and type of supplies you need, whether you go in with blades blazing or as the silent trapper. Specifically in Monster Hunter World, a big part of your hunt is gathering hints about your prey, and as you fight them time and time again, you start to learn and appreciate small and subtle hints and characteristics about each monster. While the loop itself is repetitive, the content of the match is not. Every hunt is unique and usually results in epic stories you can share with others. One of the biggest similarities between Hunt and Monster Hunt her, is the social approach within them. They're both meant to be played with someone, be it a new player that needs teaching or two veterans exchanging their best strategies for each situation they encounter together. Interestingly enough, Monster Hunter was also one of the first games I threw a lot of hours at. The amount of hours that makes parents angry with their teenage boy. It was also one of the games for which I got to know one of my first online friends I ever had, a great guy called Fox. We didn't knew too much about each other, but Monster Hunter was just the right kind of ride that made us spend time and bond together. We've learned from each other, both in-game as well as by becoming friends. A game like Monster Hunter gave us the opportunity to become close. I joined my lovely friends late into their bayou hunts and had a steep learning curve. Understanding the weapons, getting a feeling for the flow of battles, how to fight bounties, how to read the map. All of this was quite a bit to take in, I get it, it's a lot. But I enjoyed it a lot. Hunting felt like joining a community and while all I did was just helplessly tagging along for the first dozen of hours, the game gave me a lot of opportunities to educate myself, to create new strategies, find new spots and soon enough I became one of the knowledgeable hunters sharing my knowledge with others. The whole map updating thing? I learned and shared that, as well as my favorite spot to peek at the lumber mills. Nice! Einer noch, einer noch, den pushen wir. Evil. Being the new one, as well as welcoming other players, is a joy in both Monster Hunter and Hunt. Both games reward you with the slow-building feeling of accomplishment, of becoming one with your environment, becoming the hunter, being part of a group, a group of fellow hunters and friends. Another aspect of Hunt that made this whole learning experience lovelier than any hardcore game I've played before is the overworld and its inhabitants. Look, the bayou isn't a welcoming place, but it has a lot of charm. Even well over 200 hours into the game, you'll always stumble upon easter eggs or references amidst all the greenery of the map. There is love within the hostility, but most importantly, there is life. Well, not in the usual sense, there's undead life. The hostile bayou is filled with mindless, hollow grunts wandering the empty fields, as well as a few other special enemies. And I love these. In fact, most of my earlier hours, as well as yours probably, were spent with fighting and learning those unusual specimens. Hive monitors are a major inconvenience. If they spot you, they're immediately enraged and send venomous swarms after you, forcing you to reveal yourself and reposition mid-fight. Immolators are literal hot-headed demons that charge at you with maddening pace, tearing away at your health bar at terrifying speed. 
They'll definitely cost you a lot of losses if you're not well equipped to deal with each one of them, even though you'll rarely see their names pop up at your death screen since they're really easy to handle and... Uh... <laughs> <I'm>... <laughs> Fuck that statement, I guess. Each one needs a specific approach or equipment to be dealt with, something you have to keep in mind within the preparation phase I mentioned before. Immolators burst into an explosive cast of flames and power up if anything but blunt or poisonous weapons pierce their skin. Hives need some getting used to since their real heads aren't where you would expect them to be. Trying to get a good shot at the weird hanging head will slowly eat at your patience and hitting anything but the correct weak spot will just enrage them immediately. And again, these enemies create a lot of noise. Passive, alert, enraged, attack, damage and death sounds will be audible at great distances and reveal important information to your fellow enemy hunters. In Hunt, each enemy as well as scattered branches or animal coops are a sound trap designed to reveal your position to other people, meaning you will have to keep your eyes wide open and spot every single thing on sight. Everything reveals you, so you better reveal it first, preferably silently. Wherever you are and no matter how much you've played, you'll relentlessly ping at these ticking alarm clocks, especially when you're approaching a hideout or try to rotate to another spot. Pinging traps is the time to shine and learn the most as a new player. If you're not accustomed to the fights yet, you can definitely help your teammates by acting as on a pair of eyes. Or, well, ears, I suppose. Keep them open and nobody has to be left for dead. Not yet. You can help to route secure paths or instead take supportive equipment to deal with the special enemies more effectively. In my early hours I never felt out of place or like I didn't do enough compared to my mates. Contrarily, I felt like the greatest support for my team. While they secured the important kills and bounties diving deep into firefights, I was able to keep everyone updated on the even more important current dangers and movements in our close vicinity. I trapped around the hideouts, pinged movements and positions. I was always helping someone somehow, and people always appreciate it. Information and knowledge is just as important as raw skill and hunt, meaning that everyone always has something to do, regardless of skill level. Left for that! <clears throat> Alright, come out now. Is a cooperative survival shooter where you move in a group of four people through pre-made levels while slaughtering through a horde of zombies and fighting off special infected. Funnily enough, this game was also a lot of firsts for me. It was the first gruesome bloody game I've ever played, probably also the first intense shooting game I laid my mouse and keyboard upon, but it was also the first real game I started to love. Not just for the gameplay, but again, being part of a community. See, I had a wonderful group of people called Clarity around me back then. And one of them, Tarend, 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 Tarende, sorry, was kind enough to give me a copy of it while I didn't really have any financial means to do so myself. And when it came to playing it, well, to be honest, I was scared. The horror-like feeling actually made me uneasy. I mean, I was like 13, 14, I've never played anything like this before. The hardcore nature of the game morphed into a gigantic wall I had to climb over and I honestly feared it might just have been a waste of money, like I'd just fall down while trying to get up the steep thing. But it wasn't steep, and it wasn't a waste. I always had something to do. No matter how bad I've played our rounds, I felt like we all had fun, and no matter how confused I was when hordes came rushing in, I knew I could do at least one thing. Mention every single thing in sight. The special infected and left for dead have very distinct names and need to be dealt with in very specific ways. Hearing the constant hive, Hi, immolators, immolator, armor, armor, doggies, callouts and hunt reminded me so strongly of the equally big heap of boomer, boomer smoker, smoker, spitter, jockey, hunter, hunter calls I've heard in left for dead. And hearing the names didn't always ask for raw skill, it didn't always mean to point and click at them. Boomers, for example, needed to be pushed aside before you blast their bloated bodies, else you summon hordes of zombies if the bile hits you. And sometimes you just won't have enough stamina by yourself to push them aside, just like with emulators who need cooperative melee strikes. Information and game knowledge is just as, or 
well, actually, sometimes even more important than raw skill here. And playing Hunt of My Bodies reminded me of this exact same feeling, a moment of belonging, no matter who or how you are. You're just there to enjoy the game and do your best to have a good time, just like everybody else is. Still, it does take raw skill, at least a bit. See, a big part of Hunt is just a lot of pew pew, you know, lots of shooty shooty. So you better at least know how to play a point and click game if you catch the drift. And drift there is, cause Hunt's weapons don't shoot like others. Most rifles are slow and sturdy and they don't hit scan. You actually have to lead every single shot and each rifle and bullet type has a different velocity when being shot. So you don't just shoot where you want to, you actually gotta develop a feeling for leading your shots. And even then if you missed a shot... <sighs> prepare to watch some beautifully animated but slow reloading rituals. Miss a shot and you have to reposition or else there's a good chance that somebody will spot and murder you before you'll have the chance for another. All right, all right, look. First I tell you that Hunt is a hard game and then I demonstrate all the ways it welcomes you. First I show you how everything's out there to get you and then I demonstrate all the defensive options you have. You know where this is going. There is some remedy to the hard to master, hard to learn, trial and error bullet game. And that remedy is called grunts. While it feels like Hunt focuses more on PvP, PvE plays an equally big role. You can't move your mouse too far before you spot another thing you can shoot at. And as long as you don't go into melee range, these grunts can't really mess with you too much. These simple undead are just as big as regular players, take about the same amount of damage before they die, and don't react too nicely to headshots. They also move at different speeds and even react to sounds in their close vicinity. Grunts are the shooting range of Hunt that simultaneously works as its wildlife. They fill the environment with movement and sounds you'd like otherwise. So grunts are the perfect training ground to practice each of your weapons. But it's also stupidly loud to shoot at them if you shoot people know where you are and probably even which weapon you choose. But that's... Kind of a good thing, actually. See, instead of just mindlessly running around between compounds and getting surprised by enemies, you can bait people to you. Being audible isn't actually bad, it's just specific information you chose to share with others. So if you really want to learn to shoot your weapons, you can practice with the grunts close to you and ambush players who think you're easy prey. And if you aren't too fond of forced fights, you can choose different kinds of weapons. See, the year is 2021. You'd be crazy to think that there's no progression system in Hunt. Every weapon has multiple configurations or alternative builds. The regular Winfield, for example, can be played as a melee enhanced version, have an added scope, come with an additional self-made silencer, or even join your gun roster at half the size. Since I've wrote this part, they even added custom ammunition like poison, fire or explosive shots and other well things. The more you play a certain weapon type, the more variants you'll unlock. So as long as you pick your fights, be it carefully or directly, you'll unlock more options to suit your playstyle, even if you opt out and play with nothing but silenced guns. You do you. The scary titan of terrifying difficulty falls and succumbs to the power of customization and grunts. <sighs> Titanfall! And I know this is a weird surprise, considering we're talking about Hunt. Is a wild and fast movement based action shooter set in a futuristic world full of stomping titans and super soldiers. You might have guessed that this has absolutely nothing to do with Hunt this time. Except one personal thing Titanfall was the first game that introduced me to the word grunt. Grunts were. Oh, yeah, uh, <laughs> I know, okay, just bear with me, it's literally just a few more minutes, alright? Okay, thanks. Grunts were a really small addition to the first game, one that a lot of reviews talked about. Instead of just being pure 6v6 online matches, Titanfall added AI grunts. Weaker soldiers that moved in small squads for the battlefield. If you're just starting with the game, you might have had a hard time differentiating them from actual players. You could kill grunts just as easily as anybody else. And that's the point. 
Even in your first match, you have the chance to kill someone, do something, feel great about yourself, a chance to learn your weapons, to actually warm up with gameplay basics without being immediately unmatched by far stronger opponents. And I immediately saw the effect of this with my old schoolmates. I didn't share too much gaming interest with my class back then. They love Call of Duty and Battlefield and... Well, I despised these games for the lack of movement options and sunk my hours into Team Fortress instead. And then Titanfall came along and kind of merged this together. A game that looked just like their shooters, but that gave me the movement abilities I always longed for. Actually, this was the first time we've all been somewhat hyped for a game together. Some school friends even purchased Titanfall as the first AAA multiplayer game, and if it wouldn't have been for the grunts, I'm sure they wouldn't have continued on. Some classmates never played video games, so they usually didn't know who they've killed. They've just cheered about finally finishing off something at last. They weren't aware that they were just killing grunts, but they loved doing it so much that they've kept playing it even when things didn't go their way. And with every match, they started to get just a little bit better, until they even started to lead the scoreboard. Grunts were the singular reason that merged my uneven band of school friends together. People with skill gaps so far that I didn't think we could find a game we all equally enjoyed without starting to hate each other. And just like in Titanfall, Hunt's Grunts are a fantastic tool to teach new players the basics of the game and allow them to get comfortable with the mechanics. Hard games have an appeal that no other games have. There is so incredibly much power within loss. Every struggle feels like an added spice to the taste of your well-earned victories. But just because you're trying to be a hardcore game, that doesn't mean that you have to reject weaker skill sets and players. Add potential places to learn, ways to own your skills, and you'll allow a lot of different people to find the joy within difficulty, the potential growth within loss. Because in these moments, when all is lost and your band of hunters, mates or clan members hits rock bottom, that's when you suddenly form an incredible bond, one that you won't forget, one that stays with you beyond the games. A strong friendship. Hunt is a hard game, that's a fact. But Hunt also lets you control a lot of confrontations. It doesn't change the difficulty of it, but it puts you more at ease, brings your failures closer to you. All in all, Hunt is a game that creates memories. Be it wins, be it losses, I enjoyed myself. I did so for more than 250 hours. The difficult, atmospheric masterpiece that wanted me to continue. Traveling through the bayou with my closest friends felt wonderful. Especially in call times like ours where I couldn't meet them in real life. I bought Hunt as a joke for myself in July. A friend, Lucas, had his birthday and I said, Happy birthday, I'll try the game with you. And what started as a light-hearted joke, buying the game for myself, as a birthday present for him, became one of the best bonding moments we've shared so far. 250 hours of being with each other, venturing through this foreign world. And for that, I'm very grateful. There is no game like Hunt, yet it was inspired from the best of all worlds and reminded me of a lot of friendships I had. And even while creating this video about friendship, I relied so heavily on these exact friends, checking my script, helping with the real life footage and a lot more. B-roll! If you want to start with Hunt, I'd like to recommend you two channels. 4FS Gaming for really great breakdowns of the weapons, mechanics and updates of the game, as well as incredibly solid gameplay analysis. As well as a YouTuber and streamer called Psycho Ghost, who reminded me that not all has to be serious within the Bayou. He'll crack you up for sure. And to finish this and really explain how I feel about Hunt, I need the help of another good new friend. A soon-to-be author that had just the right words for something else entirely. Hunt brings me dangerously close to the great feeling of nothingness. The sweet nectar of victory tastes similarly ephemeral as the painful loss within the same bittersweet bite. And that's a feeling I long to never forget, the thin verge between highs and lows, happiness and sadness, victory and loss.